like yeah this thing right here this cpu that you see on the screen here th there's going to sell a ton of these all year to a bunch of people who are going to try uh like setting up a twitch stream because the they did demos on it that showed how a quad core i7 can't really stream 1080p and that's actually true because if you check on my channel i'm using a core i7 right now to stream and i have to i can only stream at 720p because if i go to 1080 you'll see like stutters and frame drops and stuff like that so definitely excited about upgrading it's been like a long time <laughs> i've got all these old cpus like the newest cpu i have is this one and i bought this in like june of 2013 when it came out so that's the last time i upgraded my pc well maybe that streamer doesn't know about ryzen I mean, a lot of people don't know about Ryzen. Yeah, honestly, I'll tell you right now, the the 8350 uh, for live streaming, it can live stream really good. It can live stream the same as the Core i5 and the regular Core i7, like the cheap i7s, the $300 i7s. But it can't do anything better than that. It's got eight cores, but there's so much resource sharing that it gets bottled down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video comparison. Once I build my Ryzen PC, I'm going to do... Basically, it's going to be like three computers fighting. It's going to be the i7, this one that I have right now that I'm using as my main computer that I stream right now with. This one versus AMD FX, which is like the old one, which is basically this one, uh, which is actually the computer that's like over here to the right side. I guess people can't really see it, but uh, it's... Yeah, it's that one. And then there's... Uh, uh, the yeah the Ryzen computer duh so it's like those are the three computers it's like who's faster Ryzen AMD FX or 90 or the uh, i7 and I can tell you right now I'm pretty sure Ryzen's pretty much gonna curb stomp like both of them <laughs> like it's not even it's not even worth doing the video probably but uh... yeah I gotta make them I got I, I need Ryzen to release but I'm gonna do one on DDR4 because there's a lot of people that need to know like the whole DDR4 situation. Um, definitely though, this is gonna be the limiting factor because I don't think, I mean, I think a lot of people don't realize that the DDR4 memory is gonna keep going up in price because all the new smartphones like the Samsung Galaxy S8, the new iPhones from Apple that are coming out later in the year, all those phones are going to be using the same memory that Ryzen is using and and the new Intel CPUs are also using. So it's like everybody's on DDR4. There was some kind of factory accident, some fire in China that burned down some factory that had closed it down for like weeks. So that, that's a supply issue and this demand curve is so high. So yeah, the DDR4 stuff's going to be a problem. That's like the only problem that I, I think is going to happen here. But yeah, 1700X, that's a really big deal. Uh, I don't know which motherboard. What do you guys think? Do you think that uh, I should get this Crosshair 6 or should I get like the Gigabyte? Well, see, they're all out of stock. Well, not all of them, but... I'm thinking Crosshair 6 just because of the legacy. Because my 8350, my old AMD computer, is on the old Crosshair 5. Uh, or I might go... RGB crazy with the LEDs and change all the colors and stuff and go with a gigabyte or I will go with um, I call this one cookies and cream because I don't know what they were doing with this color scheme like what is this this is such a interesting color scheme like it literally looks like Oreos I just think of Oreos or some sort of like ice cream or cookies or something when i see this it just i don't know <laughs> but this is literally the most high-end one right now and it's all sold out it's all pre-order sold out so there's that one and then there is and actually uh, i'm using for my intel computer i am using an msi motherboard the gaming the gd65 gaming um biostar has a pretty cool one I don't know where it is right now. Wait, where is it? Eh, I don't know. It's, it's somewhere around. And then uh, the other one 
is this the Tai Chi. The Tai Chi's cool because it's you can see it's got built-in Wi-Fi. You can see it's got the the antennas on it, so that that's pretty cool. That's actually really good for people who I don't know, like they're living in an apartment or something or a dorm room and they can't run Ethernet cables everywhere. Or like in a flat or something. I don't know. But Wi-Fi is kind of not... I won't even use that. So that's why... That's It's not a deal breaker for me. At first I was like, oh man, if it's no Wi-Fi, it's no buy. But uh, I kind of got over it that most of the boards don't have it. But the Tai Chi is also one that I was considering. I just wish that they put like more USB ports here. Because that's the main thing. Like this one trades USB ports for Wi-Fi. Whereas the crosshair goes like balls to the wall crazy on usb ports like look at these usb ports like literally two four six eight like that's so many usb ports <laughs> but the one thing people are gonna ding them on the fact that they took away the like the the mouse thing the ps by two they took this away so if you have like a really old mouse or if you're like a, a cs go player that really like wants low low latency keyboard or mice you want your ps by two so like that might be a deal breaker for some people on the asus board but it's so the the competition the choices are so hard to pick from because all of them like the msi one is 300 dollars, and people are probably like yeah it looks like it doesn't have that many usb ports and why are there like integrated graphics ports here when no one's going to use that but the thing is, the MSI one actually has, if you look at it, it actually has two M.2 slots. It's got one here with that shield. It has another one down here. And then it has a U.2. That is insane. It has a U.2 port. So it, it makes up for the lack of stuff on the I.O. by like throwing tons of stuff on the board itself. And it also has USB 3.1. Not a lot of these actually have USB 3.1 on the, for the front panel for the newer case. Like this is 3.1, it has USB 3.0. You know what? I'm, I'm probably gonna have to do a YouTube video on this because, like, this is this is a whole another topic in itself. Talking about motherboard selection here. Yeah, USB 3.1 is uh, I forgot what the max throughput is on that, but it's. It's the good stuff. It's basically like the latest and greatest. Yeah, like th this is these two here are USB 3.1 on the back. Like all these boards, this one has two USB 3.1. Let's look at the Tai Chi. Tai Chi's got them right here. Crosshair's got them right here. So it's like all of them have it. So it's like you got to pick between do you want a lot of USB? Do you want a lot of. Um, well, this one's actually got dual LAN connections. That's crazy. That's interesting. Um, overall, like, if I look at all of them, I think the most balanced one is probably the Gigabyte one because it has powered USB. That's the yellow one. It has USB 3. Those are, like, the, bla the blue ones. It has USB 2, which is the, the pink or red ones over here. And it has USB 3.1... And it has the old mouse, legacy mouse, and keyboard port as well. It's got optical audio. It's got uh, 5.1 surround on the built-in audio. So the Gigabyte one, in my opinion, is probably the most well-rounded. Oh, and it also has U.2. It's got the U.2 stuff. Which is basically the future. For those wondering, U.2 is slowly going to replace uh, the SATA the old hard drives and the old SSDs are going to be replaced by U.2 in the future. So this is a pretty future-proof motherboard looking at this one. And it's got M.2 right here. I can see all the little the three holes here. So that's M.2. So yeah, this one's pretty good. That's a pretty good one. And that, that price is... is mm, it's, it's high end. I mean, $200 roughly for a motherboard is high end. And then this one, $300. I don't really like the back of it, though. Like, the I.O. here is not really that impressive. Um, they do have U.2. They, they do have two M.2s. Gigabyte has one M.2 and U.2. But you know what? Like, Gigabyte, I don't know, man. It's $100 less. 
it looks better this doesn't look that nice it just looks like cookies and cream and then this one i actually kind of like this i like this gear chronicle looking thing here with the cmos battery in the middle uh it's got the wi-fi but you know looking at that i'm like really they could have at least put like two more usb ports or something in the middle so that's the only thing about this one why i'm probably not gonna get this one that this one's overpriced this one's missing a few things like looking at it let's look at the does it actually have the u.2 no it doesn't have u.2 it has two usb 3.0 front headers that's really weird uh, no one will probably use the second one though and then it has m.2 it has another m.2 so it has dual m.2 that's good uh and then it has this does not have usb 3.1 front header actually i think the gigabyte one doesn't have it either let's see uh yeah i don't see 3.1 on this one at least for the front but it's got u.2 so it's like whatever i mean it has them on the back i don't know a lot of people i know are telling me get the gigabyte one you'll be satisfied it's got all the rgb leds and stuff to light up on the ram on the side everywhere it looks cool with the whole like it's a black motherboard with like the white and silvery looking accents on the on you know like on the sides and stuff this one is overpriced, probably not going to get it. This one is missing a few things, probably not going to get it. So that kind of narrows it down to Gigabyte and the Asus one. Asus one just has so much, like, they just spam you with USB. It's like, here, here's some USB ports, now buy the motherboard. The Asus one uh, does look good, though. I will admit, this one does look good. Yeah, this is the Asus Crosshair. This one is pretty cool. It's more expensive than the Gigabyte one, though. By, like, roughly, what, $55? $54.98? Or, like, $60 more? Yeah, that one's, like, $198. Yeah, it's, like, or $194. It's, like, 60 bucks more for the Asus. But let's see, what does the Asus have that the Gigabyte one doesn't have? For one thing... It has USB 3.1. It has... Wait, how many SATA does this have? I don't know what those are. Those might be SATA Express. It might have six regular SATA. Uh, but it has... It has USB 3.1 down here. So it, it's kind of... It does not have U.2. And it only has one M.2. But I like the place where they put it. They, they put the M.2, which is, for those wondering, M.2 is this Samsung 1TB NVMe SSD that I have here. This is going to go on the M.2. Um, yeah, that's basically in a good spot because it's, it's low, so it's not going to get a lot of heat from the other components. I don't like where Gigabyte put the the m.2 on this one they put it like right underneath where the graphics card is going to go so when you're playing a game the graphics card is going to like exalt push all that hot air up against the motherboard and then like out to the side and then up so that that m.2 drive is going to heat up a lot right there so it's not a very good spot for it so that's that's one bad thing i noticed with the gigabyte board so i like the asus choice for putting the m.2 drive uh, it does have the ability to install a Wi-Fi card in here, but I wish they would have just like stuck it on the board out of the box because, like, if you look right here, uh, it doesn't. It's not really easy to see it, but you can actually put a wire Wi-Fi card in there. It has like an M.2 Wi-Fi thing. The other thing that's really cool about the ASUS one that a lot of people don't really know is. It actually is backwards compatible with AM3 because they have like the screw holes there. Now, the only thing is I wonder how durable that is if you stick a really heavy uh, Noctua cooler on there. But I do like this design. This looks really cool. Um, so, I don't know. It's going to be probably this one or the Gigabyte one.
Well, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gigabyte actually has another one that's like one step above this one, though. They have this is the Gaming Five. Gigabyte also has the Gaming Seven, which I wish they would actually show, uh, but they haven't actually listed it yet. Well, I'm probably gonna get my stuff from Micro Center, and Micro Center did update the website. Before, all they showed was this. So you could pre-order any of these, reserve your copy of these, and then like they had four motherboards, but you can't actually pre-order the motherboards, which is really annoying. Now, as of today, they've actually revealed four more motherboards. Yeah. So it's like, now there's more. And the Gigabyte one's one of them. But they I hate this. It says limited quantities. So that means it's like if you're not in line in front of the store, like it's Black Friday or something, on a Thursday morning, you're not going to be able to get one of those. Probably. They're probably going to sell out. So I, these upper one, four up here, like the Asus stuff, they probably bought more of those ahead of time to sell. So, yeah, I don't know. I may end up with a Crosshair 6 just because of the supply, but there's a lot of people on Reddit saying that it's going to sell out because it's the Crosshair 6 right now is one of the most hyped up motherboards for overclockers. Uh, anything X370 though, like this one, this one, this one. And you got to look at the power phases too. So the Crosshair I think has a really good power delivery system. So it's got what, like, how many phases does it have? Two, four, six, eight, ten. It's got a 12 phase power design, VRM design. All these little squares here count up to the number 12. That's your number of phases. Those are inductors. They're also called chokes. Um, but yeah, those are, that's basically going to help with the overclocking. Um, the Gigabyte one, let's see how many this one has. This one has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This one looks like it only has 10. So it only has 10, and it only ha it has an 8 pin here. The crosshair has an 8 and a 6, oh no, 8, 8 and a 4 pin. So it's got auxiliary extra power there for stability. So I think this one's probably going to be the better one for overclockers. Um, that's probably why it costs more. But it's also the Asus tax because Asus is actually a very popular brand globally. Um, Gigabyte's also pretty good. I think Gigabyte or MSI is number two. I don't really know who's number two out of those guys. Um, but MSI also, this one's going to be really good for overclocking because it's got, again, it's got the four auxiliary pins there. Um, and it has, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I can't see. I can't, it's it's too hard for me to see, I can't see the other phases. It's almost like they got another one there. But that's probably for like, memory or something? I don't know what that's for. Yeah, the MSI one though, if it was a different color scheme, like if, if this was more like the Gigabyte color scheme, I would definitely be considering this one, because this one is actually the most, like it has a lot of stuff on it. But I think... I may end up with the crosshair because I'm afraid that like when I go to pick them up on Thursday, uh, there's going to be people in line in front of me and they're going to like grab all the gaming fives to save money or whatever. And then I'll be stuck with the, like one of the last crosshairs. I just hope that I can get a motherboard. That's honestly, that's, I, I don't want to put this thing off. Like, <sighs> yeah, so that's basically it. That's basically Ryzen.